Okay, sorry, just being funny. Ha, huh. the value of content marketing explained. Hmm, wish somebody had done this sooner, don't you? Uh, I wish somebody explained it to me sooner because I would have really grasped the, the, the whole concept sooner. So what does it mean? And how can it help my business, this content you speak of, Rick? Well, content is basically information, and it's usually in the form of some kind of audio or text or video, a visual of some kind. It doesn't have to be video. It can be visual. And it's something that you are using to explain something, to talk about something, to clarify something, to provide information for something, to boast about something. There's a lot of different types of content that you put out there. And as a business owner, you want to think about all those pieces of content that you have that you can utilize to have, make your content have more value. So let's just say, for a second, let's um, let's 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 pretend that we're a chiropractor, right? So some of the things that a chiropractor can talk about are a specific problem, a new tool, a new location, a special, a holiday something, a free something. I know those are specials, but think about them as slightly different types of content, and it can be just informational. Back to school, watch out for the school bus. Back to school, backpacks are heavy. Back to school. These are informational things. They're how to's, they're how to help, how to solve problems, etc. And you want to be helpful in your content. You want to be informative in your content. And you want to be authoritative in your content. So the value of all of that, this is all the right messaging, which is huge and the content piece, because without good value, people aren't going to tune in to read it or pay attention to it or watch it to get the value from it. Now, once you've got good content, once you've got the message down, what you want, then it's where you place it, place it where people are. Hmm. Place it all the places you can that make sense that are relevant. Not everything is going to be not everything is going to have the same relevancy to be placed in the same platforms as other pieces of content. So know that. Make that part of your strategy. It's perfectly fine. Like me personally, I don't use Snapchat. I don't. I don't know anything about it. I don't want to use it. I know it's video. I don't want to. I don't really use Instagram, and I'm a visual guy. You know, I just think everything on there seems a little phony. It's a little self-serving. It's a little egotistical and maybe you don't think that maybe your business is thriving using that but i don't use it for me yet i may regret these words later but today i'm not using it doesn't mean you shouldn't if your people are there absolutely use it i don't find my people on linked on snapchat or instagram i do find them in linkedin i find them on facebook i find them on twitter these are the places the people that i typically work with are more often, oh, and YouTube, of course. But the value that content marketing has is you create the content and you can put it in multiple places. We talked about repurposing. You can create content in multiple formats. We also part of repurposing. So the value of content is that you can create one piece of content, like I'm doing here this video, and it's going to go in multiple places. I don't know how many exactly, but let's just say this one video is probably going to end up somewhere in eight to 12 different places. Uh, that has value in creating the content because then it gets used over and over and over. So the value of content is that I can use it in multiple places. Same thing is true a year from now as it is today in, the, in this particular video. Things are probably not going to change unless I start using a different platform. But other than that, the same information in this video is going to be true six months from now, nine months from now, 12 months from now. So I can put this back out there again later. So some of the value comes in saving my budget, saving my time of having to create more content. The value for you comes in your content can also be if you get good content that you're getting engagement with, Use it over and over and over. That's the value of it. Now, the unexciting part, if you will, of all this stuff, and it's very unexciting for me because I'm not that guy, but 
if you or you have someone in your office that's good at spreadsheets, man, the better spreadsheet you can keep about all the content you have, where you've placed it, what day you've gotten it, and then to really benefit from content, go back and look at the engagement. This got four likes. This got seven comments. This got zada, nada, nothing, zippo. This got 300 shares. What? What was that about? Was that a hot topic for the day? Is that a hot topic in general? Do more of that. You can actually look, go back and look at these numbers and don't look at the vanity numbers, but look at the real metrics and see what can you improve on? What can you add to? What should you be doing? So the value of content is really amazing. And people often ask, like every day almost, Rick, I don't know what kind of content I should create. Well, here's 20 pieces of content right here. I'm going to give you the secret. First, take a piece of paper, pencil, write it down. I want you to write down what are the 10 questions people ask you most about your business. It might be what time do you open? What's your address? How do I do this? How long is this going to take? How much is this going to cost? I don't care what it is. What are the 10 questions you get asked the most? Because that's what people are searching for. Google also to find out. Then... That's what they want to know. You as a subject expert need to come back in and fill in the missing pieces with write down the 10 things they should know about your business. Small things. For example, did you know I played college football and that's what got me wanting to be a chiropractor? Now, you post that kind of a thing during football season, which is four months long. That's a good piece of content. That's something that people could ask you about. People could ask you, do you take insurance? Chances are they do ask you that question. But people ask you why you, you can answer that by, I don't take insurance because of this reason. My price would have to go up. I'd have to do this. You wouldn't get the treatment. I'd be limited by whatever excuse or whatever the real reason is. So you can do the, what do people ask you? What should they ask you? Write down 10 of those. You can write down 50 of those if you want to. But that is the content that people want to get started with. Then from there, you can break each one of those into smaller pieces. I have a sprained ankle. Can I come to you for a sprained ankle? Do you fix sprained ankles? We do not fix anything. We make you better. That's not the same as fixing. We do not fix sprained ankles. Sprained ankles can be best healed by ice and warm compresses back and forth. I don't, I may, I may be completely off on all these things because I'm not the doctor, but you get the point. The point is more content is better. The value is in having more quality content, more relevant content, more content that the people are looking for than the content people can use. They want to be looking for it and they need to be able to use it. That's what makes it valuable to them. That's what's going to make it valuable to you because if it's valuable to them, they come in, they schedule appointments, they book a time to come in, they come in the door, they give you money, and they tell people about you. So appointments, bookings, referrals. That's what we keep talking about over and over and over. That's what we want. We want you to be able to make more money, less hassle, and put content out there that will keep you going for a long time. Now, part of it is there's a thing called the long tail. And the long tail is, is that once it's there, it stays there, right? Once you put a video on YouTube, if you don't change anything five years from now, that same video is going to be there. If people start finding that video and it start getting some likes, so let's just say uh, best back adjustment in Tulsa, Oklahoma. If you put a video up three years from now, none of your competitors still have put a video up. You're going to be the one that people find for that. That's the long tail. You get the benefit of something you did once. You get it over and over and over and over and over. It's kind of like actors when they get residuals. You know, so the value of content is vast and there's intrinsic value and there's actual value and there's true ROI value and there's measurable value. And the value comes all that. It's all a valuable asset that you have by having that content. So if you think of content rather than I've got to create a blog post, think of it as I need to create another business asset for me to have that is where the the mindset goes and that's where the thinking goes and that's where the long term it will pay off for you the short term takes a while it does take a while there's no doubt about it so be multiple places multiple platforms 
multiple formats, think long tail, think strategy, and think investment of assets for your business. That is the value of content marketing.